The idea of Newsroom was to rent uh, an AP and a UPI wire service machine, one each, and have them installed in the gallery. It was Gallery A, which is the very lower gallery in the museum. And to have the news be coming into the museum 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just as it does in any newsroom, hence the name Newsroom, there are Mike and Larry. Uh, we don't look any different. <laughs> no, they don't. You can tell who's who. And, um, so they were responding to all this raw news that was coming into the gallery day and night and rearranging it, buying newspapers that, and showing how these images were used in various newspapers, comparing them, graphing various aspects of the news, running to the Art Institute, and Jimmy, you were a student then, right? I was printing. I was Making printing these the, enlargements, the running back and the hanging them. So it was very much of a process-oriented show. And uh, they spent a lot of time, probably more time than they ever realized they would in the gallery. But it was just a terrific show because it was completely spontaneous and, and no one really knew what was going on or what was going to happen or what you were really looking for. But it turned out to be the time of the Koalinga earthquake, That's which right. did seem to dominate the news there for several, several days. But here they are. It's a good shot. I, I think that the... Um the idea of time and labor is interesting because usually you do your time and your labor before you have a show. This, in fact, uh, the show was created in the museum, so it's a museum as a studio, fundamentally. There was nothing created before, so we were beholden to the world of events to generate interesting pictures. And so it was a risk on all our part to, you know, what we didn't know what was going to come over the wire. So I love the idea that the museum show generates itself, that the show is, is the show, that uh, it's established by, by reserving that space and then hoping that something good happens. A lot of risks on all of our part. Yes, and I mean, I think that this work, as well as the work we've already seen, I mean, it's still based on the idea of that whatever, how we interpret something is based on its context and how we, how we are presented with the information. So that could be explored more deeply here. And... Um, well, I mean, you've got these uh, UPI and uh, AP machines, and they were each putting out about, uh, what was it, about 150 pictures a, a, day. a day. So we had like 300 pictures a day to look at and try to figure out what to do with. Uh, and of course, normally you would just sort of see that in your daily SF Chronicle, there would be three of those pictures which would have been used in section one, uh, and all the rest of them would have just been, you know, thrown away. But we identified that there were all kinds of images that wouldn't, you know, might never have been used as part of the news, but had all kinds of metaphorical possibilities, and we would make uh, these very large, uh, large-scale murals. The first picture, actually, it's too bad if we went back to John Glenn, I think that was one of the... There he is. Can I go back one more? Oh, well, he's there, yeah. I mean, that's... With that secret guy behind him, the, the, yeah. the devil or something. It's yeah, a, right, I mean, that's just such a, you know, there it is. That was like one of the key images that we found. I mean, he was, he didn't realize that the devil was behind him, controlling every word that, until we made it large enough to find, find that out. But we would identify different um, kinds of gestures that would be journalistic tropes, uh, and we would kind of create sequential relationships uh, with these gestural images, we, we, whatever we could figure out that would be these things that would be continually uh, coming to bear, we would create sequences of pictures. All the pictures that we collected would eventually become part of a big uh, detritus, a big island of the stuff. It just got collected in the center of the gallery, so there were like thousands of pictures that just kept adding up day by day into the center of the gallery. And then here are, here are the famous machines that, and I've told this story before, but um, we had contracted to, to rent these machines, and um, when they, AP and UPI found out that this show might be subversive in some way, they canceled. The, they just said, we're not going to give you these machines, and it was very short time before the show was to open. I just didn't know what to do, so I called the journalism department, whom I had told about this show, because I wanted to engage journalism students in the process, and very nicely, the then dean, who was a great guy, Ben Badikian, called the two wire service companies and said, look, we're co-sponsoring the show. We've got to have these machines. And because he had an ongoing relationship with them, they, they agreed to have, have the machines. <laughs> but anyway. But again, it's, it's worth just making note again about the technology of the moment. I mean, there we were, we're looking at technology that's probably another uh, earlier generation technology. Uh, 
And if you think about now how this information is being communicated, it, we couldn't do something like this yeah. because we'd just be sitting at computer screens and right. we wouldn't have all this stuff. The stuff. And here is the stuff, as you were talking about. This is, this is how the gallery looked at a certain moment when all those images were piled upon each other, kind of the sculptural aspect. But, you know, the, I, it wasn't really, the show itself did get reviewed, but none of the reviewers really seemed to understand the show. <laughs> it was a little discouraging. I'm not sure, I mean, I think people did understand it, but it didn't get understood in the news itself. Well, I think what happened is that they, they thought that uh, because you're deconstruct, you're, you're playing with these, that you would have a, a much more overt critical function, that it would be analytic, that we would be trying to find the bias in the news. And, you know, the thing that Mike and I were very clear about in all of our work is that the politics that we were dealing with were the politics of representation. We didn't want to make a, a politic available uh, too easily readable within the work itself, because that would spoil the fun. It would just be a kind of didactic. Uh, so we were, we were castigated for not being clear enough. And, you know, Mike's and my... We were uh, ignored. We, well, we've always been ignored. No, but I mean, there was a guy that came from uh, Channel 2 News, and he actually tried to do a piece yeah. about, this, about the show. But he couldn't figure out how to, he couldn't figure out how to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, he, right. he didn't have the language of a more uh, you know, nuanced language about what the meaning of this work was. It had to fit into what, unfortunately, what we're all having to fit into when we watch the news, which is just sort of this kind of, um, yeah, pavlum, that's right, just this kind of lower level uh, discourse. But you know, I, th I think that today people uh, are more aware of the fact that you're not getting an objective accounting of the news on any, in any way that you receive it. But then, I mean, this was a while ago, I think it wasn't as obvious to mm -hmm. people. I mean, it was a, a newer perception. Mm -hmm. Well, again, from my point of view, it's not about whether or not we're getting an accurate portrayal, because none of this, there's no such thing as an right. accurate documentary, anything. But it was just about the fact that here's all this news stuff, and we get a certain kind of it because it's, it all com it, it, uh, fits into a political uh, information, a uh, particular kind of voice. And we were looking at a different language. We were looking at the voice of gesture, uh, the voice of um, sequential relationships, uh, the idea of, of scale. And, and so we were, we were an, an aesthetic voice that doesn't normally get... Uh, Scene. And here's here's the, one of the graphs. This was all kind of <laughs> fake, kind of from you know, yes. this was to make it look important <laughs> yes. that uh, we were doing some work here because Mike and I went to work almost every day to the museum. So you know, who really cares about how many pictures there are in the news? Uh, gender in the news is a little bit more interesting, but we felt beholden to keep track of something <laughs> just to give it that kind of that Mike and I are actually doing something that's important. <laughs> This was a wall of political gestures called over the period of five weeks that the show was on. They haven't changed much, have no. they? Some things are consistent. 